We start our 50th episode of the series with the same goal we've had since the beginning, and that is to win the CONCACAF Champions Cup. If you're in Costa Rica, the way to do that is to get there through the Central American Cup. Guess what starts today? And welcome back, everyone, to the American Dream. I am Mr. Cellophane. If you have enjoyed the series so far, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not. Please and thank you. We kick off our 50th episode of the series with Group C play of the CONCACAF Central American Cup. We are taking on Olancho FC Los Portos from Honduras. Because the match from the last episode was just a couple of days ago, and in a couple of days from now, we have a match in the league against Herediano. We're doing a little bit of rotating as we take on Alancho FC. Conte is going to get his second consecutive start in goal. He picked up the clean sheet. He has earned it. Vitan Tusha is going to get the start at striker. Willem Getz is going to be our left wing. Marvin Alfaro getting the start on the right-hand side. Up the middle is going to be William Ramirez. Our midfield two is going to remain the same. Steven Aquista and Emmanuel Chacon are back Four, however, is going to change ever so slightly. It's going to be Herrera, Innocente, and Cordero in their normal positions. Gerald Taylor getting the start because Freddy Gonzalez, well, going all the way back to last year, he's suspended for this one. I honestly am not sure what to expect from this match, both from our team because we are rotating a little bit and we've got a lot of new faces. Some guys still needed to get really bedded into our system, but also the opposition because every time we have participated in a continental competition, we've taken on a team from either the United States or Mexico. And when you're dealing with Liga MX and MLS, we kind of know what we're getting. Honduras, not so much. Talked about it in last episode. We do need to take advantage of the set pieces. I think our team is built for it. I think we train them very well. And I think they could be the centerpiece of our attack for this season. Padilla, though, winning it back for Olancho. We'll play it back. Canales up for Baden. Fed forward, looking for Melendez. But Cordero is going to get there first. Aquista will look to turn it the other way. Tusha. Moving it to his left. He's got runners heading toward the box, but Tusha's going to stay with it. Knocked away by Diaz. Tusha back to Herrera. Up that left wing. Looking for Akista in the middle. Tusha drops it for Chacon. It's going to take a deflection off of Tusha and go in. His first goal of the year. It's a Prisa 1, Olancho nil. Getting out to an early lead and taking the first five shots of the match. Exactly what we wanted to do. Another corner kick. Willem Gesch. Picking up a weak clearance, his first goal of the year to make it 2-0, Saprisa. I take it back, it wasn't a weak clearance. It was actually Diaz getting his head on it. He made the pass out to Getz to score the goal, and 2-0 it is, but off of the ensuing kickoff, it's Olancho in control before it's stolen away by Cordero. Played ahead, Alfaro. Tries to get away from one man. Drops it to Aquista in the middle. Plays it forward. Padilla intercepts, but Innocente will gather off of a bad touch. Gets into the box. Gets will drive, and he'll put it past the keeper for his second of the night. Back-to-back -back goals within two minutes by Willem Gets, and it's a Prisa three. Olancho nil, and it was a weak play by Perez. Innocente playing it up for Getz, moving it into the box. He saw an opportunity to beat Hassel, and he took it. Honestly, this could not be the more perfect start to our Central American Cup competition. Another corner for Cordero. This one put on by Nassim Innocente, his first goal of the year. It's 4-0. I mean, every highlight in this match so far has gone our way. I didn't plan like that. I'm not cutting any of the action out. Getch sending it in. Second of the night for Nassim Innocenti. Getch with a third goal contribution on the evening. Saprice of five. Olancho nil. Third goal of the night that has directly come off of a set piece. And we are cooking with gas. Our home crowd is absolutely loving the display that they are seeing from Saprisa tonight. Gets to deliver another one in, looking for Innocente. This time it's popped up. Herrera playing it across. Ramirez, his blast is going to be blocked and cleared. Perez will gather for Olancho and look to start the counterattack. Hurtado in control, moving it into the middle. Diaz with it now across for Oliva up the right wing, but he is going to be marked, so he'll drop it back 
and the attack is over. Conte looking to send it long into the Olancho end. One by the away side. Played out wide. Oliva carrying it forward. He's got Herrera backtracking. Oliva looking back post. Melendez pushed down by Hugo Cordero, who has done so many good things in this match. That wasn't one of them. Penalty has been called. Melendez steps up, beats Conte to get one back. It's a priest of five. Olancho won. Well, Mohamed Conte's perfect running goal couldn't last forever. 5-1 lead, though, and we still have five minutes left in this first half. Off at the free kick. It'll be cleared away. Alfaro gets it, plays it towards Taylor, who will chest it down. His cross will be blocked, and Olancho looking to go the other way, trying to add a second before the first half is up. Drop to Baden, across for Cruz, taken over, though, by a backtracking Getz. Throwing it forward, Tusha running after it, but Alancho will regain control. Canales up for Oliva, looking for Perez, Aquista stepping in front of it. Herrera, Ramirez looking towards his right. He finds Alfaro there. Alfaro still in control in the middle of the pitch. Aquista pushing it forward into the box, splitting the defense, taking the shot and clattering it off of the crossbar, putting it behind for an Alancho goal kick. And that is most likely going to be the final highlight of the first half, 45 minutes in the books, 11 to 5, your shots on goal in favor of Sapritza. Alancho with just the one shot on target. It was the penalty that they converted off of the foot of Marvin Melendez, but Vitan Tusha, Willem Getch twice, and Nassim Innocenti twice have Sapritza up 5 to 1. With a four-goal lead and victory almost assured, we're going to make some changes. Michael Sambataro coming in in place of Daniel Herrera. We're going to give him a rest. We're going to leave Getz out there for just a little bit longer. Give him the opportunity to maybe pick up that hat trick. But Tusha is going to make way for fresh legs in the form of Esteban Cordero. And in the midfield, Randall Gomez is going to take over for Steven Aquista. Three changes as we head into the start of the second half. A first half that was all Saprisa at home. Can we do the same thing in the second 45? Free kick from Ramirez looking back post. Padilla is going to clear that away. Can Diaz get there first for Alancho? He does. He'll play it forward. Melendez in a little bit of space, which... He does uh, get closed down a little bit by Cordero. Cross in the middle. Perez able to put the header on, and it will skip past Conte to make it 5-2. All right, boys, now you're starting to make me a little bit nervous. We've hit the hour mark. We are still winning by three. I'm not giving up hope yet, but this second half has been owned so far by Alancho FC. Julio Perez picking up the goal in the 60th minute which has knocked the lead down. We are getting close toward the end of the match. Vilm Getz is tired. Ramon is going to come in and take his place. Emmanuel Chacon will make way for Luis Alfaro as two more changes are made. But before that happens, Getz delivering the corner. Oliva, though, will clear it fairly easily for Alancho. Sambatano up ahead. Gomez gets. Nutmegs a man, still with it, gets with a drive from 25 yards out, and that will go easily into the stands as the changes will be made. 20 to 8, your shots on goal with just about 10 minutes left to go in this match, and Saprisa enjoying a very comfortable 5-2 lead, as comfortable as any three-goal lead is, even though it did feel like things were tightening up a little bit after Saprisa scored two in a row. Cordero dropping it back for Ramon Taylor. Gomez finds Innocente. Does he look on the left? He does. Alfaro is there. Right-footed shot. Finds the top corner. His first goal of the year. An assist for Nassim Innocente. He has, at the very least, three goal contributions in this match. And Saprisa in... Added time in the second half takes a 6-2 lead, which should put us in a very commanding position at the top of the table here in Group C. But the match isn't over yet. Innocente, near side, Sam Bataro, tries to move it past his man, can't get out of traffic. Innocente, Ramirez quickly to Cordero, nice turn pass. He's got Alfaro who blasts it, and Hassal able to make the save, knocking it behind. For another Saprisa corner, it feels like 
Most of the highlights we've watched today have been Saprisa corner kicks. Ramon sending it in. Can't pick out Innocente. Cleared away by Olancho. Gomez getting it back, recycling it quickly for Ramon. Bit of a heavy touch dealt with by Garcia. The only way he knows how. Putting it out for a throw. And the final whistle is going to come. 6-2, your final score in the end. Never a doubt in my mind. That match ended up being the swan song for Gerald Taylor. We had taken away the vice captaincy from him because we found that we had more suitable candidates, those that would be on the pitch a little bit more. He became pretty grumpy about that, and he wasn't letting us hear the end of it. So ultimately, we have sent him out on loan to Guatemala. He's now at Comunicaciones. And I know it may seem like all we're doing is getting rid of our center backs, but there is a method to our madness. 21-year-old Aaron Vieira has been loaned down to Almargo. He's Argentinian, which made him foreign, which made him have no place on the squad. So better for him to go get playing time elsewhere than to just rot nowhere. Taylor and Vieira will not be the only players not taking part in the match against Herediano as Edward Lopez in training fractured his cheekbone. He's gone for the next two to three weeks. It just means more opportunities for others to lead the line. Back in the league on the road at Herediano, we pretty much picked up right where we left off, except it was Herediano who struck first as Hernandez, with a beautifully bent shot into the top corner, makes it 1-0. We would get it back, though, in the 35th minute. Ball fed forward. Marrera finding Cordero for the goal, his first of the year. He'd been relegated to our third-string striker. He's like, let me show you what I can do. Tusha around the side into the middle, finds Cordero for his second late in the first half. 2-1, Saprisa at the break. 75 minutes in, Cordero looking to make it a hat trick, hits the crossbar, it pops the Tusha, who puts it home for his second of the year and a 3 1 Saprisa lead. We would add the exclamation point in the 90th minute. Ramirez taking it forward, knocked away by Alianov, straight to Morera for his second goal of the year. In the end, it really wasn't in doubt, even though we found ourselves down 1 0 after 23 minutes. Esteban Cordero with a pair. Tusha and Marrera each scoring their second of the year. We pick up our second league victory and go back to the top of the table where we belong. We have ourselves a ton of youngsters who can play center back, but none of them are, well, frankly, even close to first team ready. So we needed to bolster our numbers at the position, make sure we had enough depth to not cause any discontent amongst the sides. So we went back to our old foes in Herediano and we pilfered another player from them. 23-year-old Randy Duarte, Costa Rican U-20 international. Not completely in the mold of the center backs that we would typically look for. He's a little bit slower than we would like. His heading ability, not as great. Lacking a little bit of composure as well. Decent positioning, though. Good decision maker. His anticipation is key. He also stands at six foot two, And, well, once you're six foot two, everything else... Kind of goes out the window. So we were off to Nicaragua, back in the continental competition, taking on Real Esteli. Mohamed Conte getting the start once again in goal. Daniel Herrera back as our left back. Innocente and Gonzalez will be the center backs. And Hugo Cordero getting the start again on the right side. Aquista and Chacon will man the midfield. At the 10, once again, is Diego Marrera. Tusha and Getz will be the wingers. And for the second consecutive game off of a two-goal performance, after all, is Esteban Cordero. New signee Randy Duarte will be on the bench. Real Esteli coming in, having won their first four matches in all competitions. Well, guess what? We've done the exact same thing. And it's not even the question of which Saprisa team is going to show up, the one in the first match or the one in the last three. We have put in back-to-back-to-back -back -back solid performances. I am expecting Saprisa to come away with an easy victory, even though we are on the road, not sure what to make of this Nicaraguan side. First highlight is for Real Esteli. Medina controlling it off of the throw-in. will drop it to Martinez. Back for Gutierrez. 
They're enjoying quite a bit of possession, but it's all been in their own end so far. Every shot on goal in the first 15 minutes has gone to Priest's way. Nice header ahead for Cordero. Gets, gets it back, even though his original cross was blocked. Akista shooting it from range and just a little bit too strong. It'll go out behind for a Real Esteli goal kick. Four shots to nil. We have managed two as Cordero makes another great defensive play. Our defense has been stellar in the early going. Gets centering it. Can't pick out Cordero. It'll be cleared, but only as far as Hugo Cordero. Flipped forward. Tusha across. Shimoro looking to clear. Herrera, though, putting it on goal. Hitting it into the ground for his second goal of the year. 20 yards out. And it's Real Esteli nil. Saprisa one. As we cross the 20 minute mark of this match, Shamaro thought he had cleared it. Herrero just steps into it and drives it home to give Saprisa the 1 0 lead. As long as we keep dominating in this way, we are going to be very successful all year long. Akista gets the ball, drops it to Innocente near the midfield stripe. Left side for Herrera, moving it in. Looking for Cordero behind the defense, and he will pot home his third goal of the year, except Cordero was deemed to be offside. So off of the free kick, Hansak will send it forward. shamaro has got Gutierrez. Tusha, though, will pick his pocket, cross it over to Getz. Getz moving it to his left. Akista into the box. Marrera off of the post and in. Diego Marrera with his third goal of the year. And Saprisa takes a 2-0 lead. We have been all over Real Esteli just like we have in the last couple of matches. Off of the throw in. Akista into the box. He's got Getz. Works his way around. Two men. Puts the shot on. But Hansak in perfect position to make that save. He will drop it down and boot it into the Saprisa end. Nobody there but Herrera, so he will settle it down off of his chest. Up the wing, Tusha moving it into the middle. Tusha still with it, dribbling. Tusha shooting from range, and it'll trickle in on Hansak and ultimately not trouble the keeper. Cordero with the free kick. So very close. Hansak had to get his hand on that one. He almost tucked it in under the crossbar. Cordero to take the corner from the near side. Sending it near post. Salinas heading it high. Gonzalez out for Cordero. Back to Freddy Gonzalez. Cordero, Gonzalez, Innocenti. Still in control. We'll just look to recycle it back to Akista. And that is pretty much going to do it for the first half. A first half that was all Saprisa, 15 shots to one. Herrera and Marrera each scoring a goal to give us a 2-0 lead. The message at the half was, well, things are going great, but they can be even better. Free kick, Tusha, headed away by Hernandez, but tracked down Herrera. For Marrera, trying to pick out the top corner, but his shot's going to go wide. Not much has changed here in the second half. We are still buzzing, looking for a third. Hugo Cordera in control, carrying it up the right side, around the edge of the box, into the middle. It finds its way through to Vettentusha, picking up his third goal of the year. And it's a priest at three, Real Esteli nil. Tusha just charging forward, and we've hit the hour mark. 21 shots on goal for Saprisa, still just one for Real Esteli. Another corner, Cordero, Gonzalez, and Freddy Gonzalez heads it home into the ground for his first of the year to make it four. I think if there was any doubt of how this team was going to perform this season, it has all been wiped away. We're going to give Ramon some playing time. We don't have to worry about the foreigner requirement here in the Central American Cup, so he can play. Tusha is going to slide into the striker position. Emmanuel Chacon, feeling a little complacent, is going to be replaced by Luis Alfaro. Now, because we're up 4-0, our bench is generally uninterested in what is happening in the game. But hey, if we can get some minutes in some of our younger legs and take off some of our veterans and save them for the next match, well... That's something that we are going to do. Real Esteli has managed a second shot on goal. Still nothing on target. Conte untested in this match. And it's going to end with a whimper for Real Esteli. Four goals on the night for Saprisa. Much more than we needed. 25 shots to two. Another 
commanding performance by our little Costa Rican side that could. So halfway through the competition, we find ourselves where we expected to be at the top of the table, a plus eight goal difference on six points. H&H Export is next. They are at the bottom of the table. I don't think that's going to be very interesting. So for tomorrow's episode, we are taking on San Carlos in the league. We'll, of course, still see the highlights against H&H Export, but we're also going to bring the match from the Guatemalan side, Municipal. It's a way to end our group stage competition in the Central American Cup, and we hope that you are here for that tomorrow. If you like that video, make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Thank you everyone for your support and we'll see you back tomorrow. Hopefully we're going to keep on winning. Until then, bye-bye.